Hello and welcome to Holy Redeemer. We are happy to celebrate this Mass with those of you who are here with us today and with all of those from our community who are watching at home. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday in ordinary time. Normally we ask you to turn off your phones at this time, but for this week only, we ask you to silence them, but keep them turned on. Our opening hymn tonight is on the cards you received at the door, here at this table. Christ have, mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Zeph, where three with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Zeph. So David and Abishah went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade, with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abisha whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abisha, do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Nair, and the troops. He said, here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I will not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. said to his disciples, Do you hear I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. The person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well, and from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is it to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. And your reward will be great, and you'll be the children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, brothers and sisters of Christ. We have all heard the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. It is a wonderfully simple phrase that captures the life of the disciple of Christ. Even the youngest child can understand its meaning. And as we age through the years, it never ceases to guide and correct us in how we should treat others. Jesus, of course, is our model for living the golden rule. Throughout the gospel, he teaches us that our power to perform good works comes not from ourselves, but from God, the 
Father in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Without this wellspring of grace, we become starved of our ability to show mercy and care for others. Unfortunately, too often we see this famine of goodwill all around us. God yearns to share his love, but he cannot do so through small hearts. However, when we nurture our friendship with Christ, God's abundant grace will be able to act more fully in our homes, our places of work, our parish, our church, and our world. By inviting God to live within us, we are then able to give generously to others, even beyond what we ourselves have received. This supernatural faith, becoming concrete in our actions, is the inspiration for this year's annual appeal theme. From God to London, our gifts of charity. When your gift to the annual appeal is born of God's abundance in your heart, it is infused with grace to strengthen the more than 70 ministries supported by your gift as they serve people in need throughout our local church. This includes our work to defend and promote the dignity of life in all its stages, our education of children in the faith, our catechetical formation of the Catholics, our formatarian and promotion of vocation, our support of priests and religious, our care for the earth, our common homes, our celebration of the diverse ethnic communities of this archive, and so many more charitable works made possible by your gift. Ultimately, the choice of whether to give or how much to give is left to each of us to decide. The same is true of any time, talent, or treasure we share with each other. May you also be inspired by that well-known prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, reminding us that it is in giving that we receive. In this spirit, please join me in prayerfully making a gift to the annual appeal today. Your gift brings hope to those who need it and supports them so that God's abundant love can transform our hearts and world. Thank you for your gift and for your life today. of this local church of Washington, many of which benefit our own parish. Bears repeating every year that annual appeal donations are restricted, meaning your donation can only be used for the ministries outlined in the case for support and will not be used for any other purpose, including legal or administrative fees. I hope that everyone in our parish and family can make a commitment this year. The size of the gift or the amount of the sacrifice that matters also happy, this is new, I believe, to inform you that starting this year, a portion of the funds raised over our parish goal would return to the parish in support of our parish ministry life. So I thank you sincerely for your commitments today. I'll briefly walk you through two ways of making your 2022 annual appeal pledge. Here's where the phone staying silent but on comes in. The first and preferred method of giving is by using your smartphone, if you have one, and visiting give.adw.org. Again, that website is g-i-v-e dot a-d-w dot o-r-g. If you're doing that while you navigate that page, I invite the rest of you to take the commitment envelope that has been placed in the pews. Did that happen? Yeah, yeah okay. wonderful. Uh, and complete your pledge using that form. The envelopes will be collected after we complete the process. 
for those of you using the smartphones, completing your pledge online, you will find a drop-down menu of parishes in the Archdiocese. Please choose our parish and click on Give Now. Also bears repeating, not in the script, but there's not one, not two, but three Holy Redeemers in the Archdiocese of Washington. So it's important to get the right one. I'm sure the others on New York Ave and Kensington will appreciate your pledge, but like I said, please choose the College Park one. The first thing you will do once you have chosen our parish is create your donation. There are three options. An annual pledge, a one-time gift, or a monthly sustaining gift. You will then choose the pledge amount and frequency of payment. The parish field at the bottom of the section should already show our parish. After you've created your donation, you will complete your information in the next section. Please be sure that your information is accurate so that you will receive timely payment reminders and letters of acknowledgement. Finally, you will be asked to complete your payment information. You can set up your pledge with a credit card or bank account today. You also may choose the bill me later option to make your pledge now and determine your method of payment at a later date. If instead you have been using the phone and you choose to complete your pledge using those envelopes, the process is much the same. You will complete your contact information at the top and then choose your 2022 pledge amount and method of payment below. Please be sure to write in your total amount pledged on the appropriate line, as well as the amount enclosed and balance to be paid. No cash or check payment is required at this time, but if you choose to do so, you may use the envelope to enclose the payment. Once you have completed the form, you may tear off the front flap and fold and seal the envelope. And in just a little bit, I think and hope, our ministers of hospitality will be around to collect those envelopes. Also, uh, so there's the option of the phone, there's the option of the envelopes. Uh, I'm technologically illiterate and close to being a Luddite, so I don't really understand these things. But I think there are QR codes also, yes, that's a thing, right, at the front and at the mezzanine. So uh, if that was too fast or you would like to do that, that's another option. If you use the QR codes, uh, it will bring up basically the same information that I have outlined. Once more, on behalf of the Cardinal and the charitable works of our Archdiocese, supported by your gift, I thank you for your generosity. Now let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not created, consubstantial with the Father, who from whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, as a part of the Virgin Mary, for our sake, he was crucified and not inspired. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I will be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Giver of God. Receive you from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the I believe in one of the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for baptism and the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Trusting in our God, who has measured out mercy abundantly in Jesus Christ, we now bring before him all of our needs. That the church will be a rich source of mercy for those lost in sin. Let us pray to the Lord. 
celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For who is Paschal Mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, who claim everywhere your mighty works. You have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself. From the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and he thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, to pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. You make of us an eternal offering to you, so we obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, was a Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. Compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. For our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we always be free from sin and safe from all distress. We pray the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some gesture of peace. sins of the world, bless her this call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am my Lord, and my Lord, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Grant we pray, Almighty God, may you experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged, pledged to us by the sisters. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Just two announcements. Morning Mass on Treasury's Day is coming Monday, February 21st. We'll be celebrated at 8.30 a.m. as usual, following 7.30 a.m. Eucharistic animation. The Holy Redeemer Parish office and school will be closed on Treasury's Day. And Father Mark's farewell breakfast is next Sunday. Please leave a message or send an email to the parish office by this Monday. You are planning on attending, so we can plan on and on here. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks Thanks God. God. Our closing song is number 519. O oh God, beyond all praises, I thank thee. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. 